Hello and welcome to Getting APIs to Work. Today we'll talk about developer experience and developer success and why just looking at developer experience maybe sometimes is not quite enough. And to talk about this, we have Christoph Fantoma of Pronovix. Hey, Christoph, how are you doing? Thanks for joining. Hi, Eric. Thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, very excited to be here. Yeah, it's 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 great to have this conversation with you. We started talking about it at a conference um, a little while ago. And back then, I had just written or no, created a video actually about developer experience. And I think we just started exploring this topic a little bit. So let's start by just briefly talking about developer experience and maybe what at least most people probably think about it when think about when they hear developer experience. So how would you define developer experience? How probably most people frame this uh, this term? So I've been talking for well quite a few years now uh, about developer experience as as the inverse of uh, developer friction, of of API friction. Um, so as um, and um, you know you, there's these things like a, a time to first hello world and so on as kind of like gimmicks to kind of express that and make it clear what that means. Um, and it's super important. Um, to, like it's really really important but it's not enough. And that's uh, that's why uh, this year we're going all in on developer success. Uh, and uh, and that's, that was how we started talking about this and and how the idea came to, to do this recording. Yeah, and I, I agree that time to first hello world is maybe not the most important thing, um, but, but people love it when they can measure things, right? So yes. that always mm -hmm. makes things easy. And, and that's, it's important. But um, yeah, I agree that developer experience sometimes definitely has a little bit too short of a, I would say, of a, of a perspective. So, so um, I'll give the brief summary of what I talked about, mm -hmm. and then you can maybe yes. <laughs> contrast that with your thinking. Okay, so so my claim was that developer experience, of course, is necessary. You have to make sure that your APIs are usable. But then the next one that I said is you also have to make sure that the things that are getting built with your API are useful. So it's not just developers being able to use your API, but also providing APIs that then are used to build useful applications for the end users. So that was like the, the UX thing. Mm -hmm. And then the last thing that I also added to it was to say, and it's not just enough that you can build useful applications. They also have to drive the business model of your organization. So there has to be a value exchange where all of this is not just nice for the developers and nice for the users, but also useful for your organization. And that value exchange was kind of the last and let's say the most encompassing dimension that, that I added to it. And, and, and when we talked about it, I think that kind of aligned a little bit with what mm -hmm. you think about when you talk about developer success, but not 100% or like how would you contrast that to your model mm -hmm. of developer success? Well, there's, there's two definitions of developer success. Uh, one is the developer success as in like the ultimate outcome you want to have to make developers successful. And it's not just local success as in the developer was able to do their job, but it's also and this job that they did was actually meaningful and, and got them to a good outcome. Um, the other one is developer success as a practice, uh, very similar to customer success, uh, which is like um, you have a team of people that are helping um, their developer customers to, to become successful. Uh, I won't, we won't talk about the second one, but talking about the first one, uh, I think there still is like also a distinction between internal versus external. Uh, and I, I like to talk about this as interface versus platform. Um, so an interface is the external one, uh, platform is the internal one, um, where um, there's a, a difference between APIs and, and the developer success you're building for uh, uh, for reuse of assets, where you're basically you're enabling a team to be to do that job quicker, uh, where it's a lot about reuse and you don't really care too much about the value exchange piece because you're just trying to get people to use this thing so that they get the job done faster. But then on the outside, when you're talking about interfacing with the community or with your customers or partners, their value exchange is, is super super important because you know this too often that's people 
make APIs that might even damage their business. Um, you know, pro giving data away uh, that other people are building products on that ultimately becomes a strategic uh, Achilles heel for, for the organization. So you need to watch out very much with that. And then how do you manage all of this? This is a complex question that, that you, you can't just say, we have fantastic developer um, experience, like amazing first for, uh, time to hello world. Uh, we're done here. No, 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 that's just the start. That's like when you really have to start looking like, what are people actually doing? And how can we, how can we react on that? And how can we build our business around that? Uh, so that, you know, this becomes something good for our organization. Yeah, and to me, like, I, I really like the distinction that you made between the internal and the external facing ones, because like you said, there probably is a pretty big difference in the way I put it in the value exchange, right? So the value exchange, mm -hmm. when you look at internal APIs, it's kind of within like one ecosystem, right? Of course, it, it helps you if one team can build experiences based on something that another team did, and they can do that with less friction, like you said. But I think you're kind of assuming that by definition, right, all of these teams are somehow contributing to the value that the mm -hmm. organization yes. is creating, right? So, so there, I think the value exchange part is almost a given. And as you said, for the external ones, that may be a much, much more complex question. Like what is the value exchange? Like you said, even a, like a negative value exchange. Yes. You're draining value through exactly. API. And and it's um, like this thinking about platform versus interface. This comes from uh, conversations I've I've had and and things I've read from Jay Bloom, uh, who has this uh, three economies model where he says um, that um, uh, well a very very short summary and I'm paraphrasing <laughs> heavily, um, but that there's a different way of running a team that's building platform assets than how you should be running a team that's building this external facing. What, what I'll call interface assets. Um, and it's very, very different because in platform assets, you want maximum reuse. And this is what often is tried to be done with APIs. But once those assets become something that are, are, are put on the outside, you, you need to, to like have some way of extracting value back so that your business, um, you know, that, that there's something valuable coming back for your organization. And that might be growing an open community that is changing how people think. So it might not be about money, but you need to, need to think about um, how, how to make sure that that interaction is, is valuable. Yes. And I think in many cases, like you said, for example, if you look at partner APIs, right, in that case, you're probably not really looking at maximum reuse. You're looking at something that's specifically designed to support that, that relationship that you have with partners. And if, if that helps with that, that, that's it, right? That's all you want from that thing. It's not that you design it to kind of attract new partners, so to speak. That's a very different, I would say, path that you're going then. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so in terms of how, practically speaking, developer success is something where you said you, you want to push it more um, also in your messaging and in what you're, what you're talking about. And then we'll link to some um, blog posts that you wrote in, in the description. Um, how would you tell people how can they improve developer success within their organizations or for the assets that they're building? Mm, I think that the, the well, the key thing is to think about it really as um, API products, but like really products, because I think there's a lot of talk about API products, which is, um, it's it's not really about products. It's about making something that's reusable. And and I think there's that's, that distinction between an API product and an API platform, like internally, yes, it's also about reuse, but externally, you have to have something that, that has a business case. So and I, I did a recording yesterday with Kun Adolfs from API Amro, and he said that all their APIs are like monetized, monetized, not that they're charging money for everything, but everything has a very clear business purpose. And I think that's, that's what we need to get to, uh, especially on the outside uh, side. Yeah. I love that. Like you said, you know, all the APIs are monetized, but not in the sense that they're being charged for necessarily. And and that's basically just means, as 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 I understand it, right, that for each API that you're exposing there, you have a business model. You have yes. something that describes, you know, this is why this API makes sense. 
And even if it doesn't create direct revenue, right, it, it somehow it contributes to some other place where you do make revenue and, and you should think about what that is. And I think exactly. that's actually excellent. I think for each API, that's, have, do you see that? I mean, you talk to a lot of organizations, just out of curiosity, have you seen that in organizations that basically when they talk about API documentation, that there's a little business model thing? Uh, there? Most times it isn't. I, I think that this, there's this, I think this is the, the bifurcation that we need to make is, and, and I, I actually talking with you now, I have a new idea. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I think, I think actually, I, actually, this is really the thing is that um, an internal API program needs a different mindset from an external facing API program and we're confusing them. And this is where the problems come because we're just trying to publish all our APIs what you should be doing on the inside, but on the outside, that's not necessarily what you should be doing. On the outside, you have to have that business model uh, behind the API um, on top of you know all the other stuff you're doing to make it a product. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, yeah, that, I think that's a good point. Like for uh, for like typically, what I do is I like I have these three things where I say private, partner, public. These would be the three mm -hmm. categories of APIs. And yeah, I think it actually that would make a lot of sense for partner and public APIs to always be very clear about the business model that they yep. have. And then you can also measure success, I guess. Yes, exactly. Okay, so in that case, let's say for developer success to be, um, to be something that you support better going forward, just think about your API business models. Would that be a good actionable advice that that you would uh, agree to? I think so. And and talk to your yep. business people. Like, you know, um, that don't just stick in your technology. Make sure you you have a uh, like a good line to your business, um, because this is what they do for a living um, every day. And you'll probably have a hard time writing that business model when you don't talk to your business. People, exactly. I guess. Right? <laughs> so, so, I think we we just you know we gently push people in that direction. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, um, thanks so much for joining. This was really interesting. I hope that um, everybody got something out of this. I think we really have to become more holistic when it comes to thinking of our APIs, not just looking at the mechanics, but really like what are they doing for our business. And that's that's. I think that is a. A trend that we see in, in different shapes and forms. And I think moving from developer experience to developer success is another push in this direction. Thanks, Christoph, for um, joining. Thank you again. Uh, it was a, yeah, it was short and snappy, but actually, uh, like quite some interesting things came out already. I'm like my 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 mind is starting. <laughs> so yeah, very good. good. So we'll just have a follow up, you know, a little later on when when you have developed more ideas. Okay. So um, thanks everybody for joining. Thanks for uh, tuning in. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. And with that, we're done for today. Keep getting APIs to work. And until next time, bye bye. Bye. Thank you.